diabetic retinopathy diabetic retinopathy refers to the process of microvascular damage to the retina as a result of chronic hyperglycemia in patients with diabetes so diabetic retinopathy means it is the process of microvascular damage in this picture you can see that retinal vessels is damaged so the this process is known as the diabetic retinopathy the process of microvascular damage to the retina the main cause behind this is uh, hyperglycemia chronic hyperglycemia after 15 years with a diabetes mellitus nearly all patients with a type 1 diabetes and 80 percentage with a type 2 diabetes will have the diabetic retinopathy there are some risk factors for retinopathy that is high blood glucose level hypertension kidney disease elevated cholesterol pregnancy anemia all these are the risk factors of retinopathy the diabetic retinopathy the most common cause is persistent hyperglycemia there are two types of diabetic retinopathy first one non proliferative retinopathy second one proliferative retinopathy so in case of non proliferative retinopathy it is the most common form partial occlusion of the small blood vessels in the retina causes the development of microaneurysms in the capillary wall here what happens is here there will be partial occlusion of small blood vessels in the retina that cause microaneurysms development in the capillary wall and these microaneurysms are so weak that's why the capillary fluid will be leak out that cause retinal edema and eventually hard exudates on intraretinal hemorrhage vision may be affected if the macula is involved so in case of non proliferative retinopathy the blood vessels will be occluded that's why there will be development of microaneurysms these microaneurysms are fragile that's why there will be fluid leak out that cause retinal edema so when you are observing through the fundoscopy examination dilated visual examination we can see cotton wool spots my spots cotton wool spots microaneurysms macular edema all these features can be seen in the non proliferative retinopathy but in case of proliferative retinopathy it is the most severe form it involves the retina and vitreous when retinal capillaries become occluded the body compensates by forming new blood vessels to the supply of retina with blood the pathological process is known as neovascularization these new vessels are extremely fragile and hemorrhage easily producing vitreous contraction eventually light is prevented from reaching the retina as the vessels become torn and bleed into the vitreous cavity the patient sees black or red spots or lines if this new blood vessels pull the retina while the vitreous contracts causing tear or partial or complete retinal detachment will occur if macula is involved the vision is lost the patient become completely blind so in case of proliferative retinopathy it is the most severe form here the main involvement is retina and vitreous retinal capillaries occluded that leads to a, uh, a compensatory mechanism that is neovascularization here there will be a new blood vessels that will be formed to uh, get uh, blood to the retina 
and these blood vessels the new blood vessels will be extremely fragile that's why there will be hemorrhage this hemorrhage that leads to vitreous contraction eventually uh, retinal detachment and the patient become completely blind gradually so that is the two types of diabetic retinopathy non proliferative retinopathy and proliferative retinopathy the uh, when you are observing with the uh, fundoscopy uh, you you can see the abnormal growth of blood vessels diabetic retinopathy can be prevented by fundoscopic dilated eye examination annually by a trained optometrist every year we have to change or uh, we have to check the vision of the client so eventually we can identify that the, the there is changes in the retina next one regarding the management usually the control of blood glucose control of blood pressure is the general management for the uh, retinopathy the main management of retinopathy is photocoagulation of the retina retinal laser photocoagulation here pan retinal scatter photocoagulation for proliferative retinopathy or neovascular glaucoma focal photocoagulation for macular edema and vitrectomy for non clearing vitreous hemorrhage or uh, tractional detachment of retina and some ca uh, some cases the ablation of pituitary by surgery or radiation in case of tumor pituitary tumor in that case we can do the ablation of pituitary by surgery or radiation but in case of diabetic retinopathy there is no need for ablation of pituitary here uh, we have to mainly manage the blood glucose level control the blood glucose level and also control the hypertension then retinal laser photocoagulation that is uh, pan retinal scatter photocoagulation for proliferative retinopathy or neovascular glaucoma focal photocoagulation for non proliferative that is macular edema then vitrectomy vitrectomy for non clearing vitreous hemorrhage or tractional detachment of retina and cryo surgery also can be done in case of uh, diabetic retinopathy the main complications of diabetic retinopathy is blindness cataract glaucoma thank you